All right, uh, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Carmel, Speaking Our Life Coaching, Single Parent Empowerment Coach, and I am here today with Nan Mullen. And I, I hope I got, I pronounced your name right. I always worry that I'm gonna get it wrong. It's Mian. Close enough, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, 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 say it, say it for me. Mian, Mian. Mian, okay, okay, okay. Cause I'm like, it's spelled, yeah, anyways. We're not gonna get into that. <laughs> Um, and she uh, specializes in helping women overcome gray area drinking. And I'm actually going to let you, man, um, talk a little bit about what you do. And then we'll talk about why we're having this conversation. Yeah, for sure. So I help women overcome gray area drinking or step out of gray area drinking. Um, and gray area drinking is that zone because most people are kind of like, hmm, it's that zone where you know that you're drinking a little bit too much and a little bit too often. And you know it, right? Um, but you're still, you know, managing all the things, it, you know, well enough, you think, right? Um, and I help women really just uh, step into their power, right? So doing that healing work that's required, because there's always some form of trauma and pain behind the excess drinking, right? Um, so doing that, and then reclaiming their power and getting more better boundaries established, and just all sorts of good fun growth stuff. Yeah. And I call myself actually um, not a sober coach because it's not about that. It's never really about the drinking, right? Um, I'm a soul alignment coach. So that is what I use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. And I think that that's so true. When you are aligned with your soul, you don't feel the need to um, do anything in excess, be it drinking or, or anything else, right? Right, balance for sure is key, balance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. So part of the reason that we're having this conversation today is because I, you know, I've seen it, I know Mian, you've seen it, um, those jokes, those <laughs> posts, <laughs> that? I've lived it. <laughs> You've lived it. Okay, yeah, there's that. And, yeah. and I guess what prompted it for me is that I see a lot of these jokes in social media, like mommy needs a mommy needs a glass of wine, you know, the, these things that um I don't know if it's if it's elevating, you know, frequent drinking or like how how to really word that, but it just makes it kind of not a big deal. Right. It's a yeah, socially acceptable coping mechanism. So I, I love how you put that a socially acceptable coping mechanism. That's exactly what it is. And is it really helping us cope? Is it really helping us live the life that we want to live? And from my own perspective, the answer is no. And I think given the work that you do, the answer is no for you as well. Right. It finally became a no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, just the checking out right but it's um i mean yes and it's all used like a joke too right the whole like mummy needs a wine or like i mean there's so many shirts and this and that and cups and mugs and all making it funny and humorous therefore more acceptable right like oh yeah we'll just laugh about it and but it's like there's such a a, a negative fallout like it's not funny and so you have to really open your eyes to see the marketing behind it all that, that women in particular have been, it's been shoved down our throats from the big alcohol companies. Right. And we've all just like been swept up into it because, well, the truth is, you know, the first drink works, right. It really does kind of solve all your problems, right. The first drink, right. It just takes the edge off. It's the reward that you've earned and all the things, the stress, the overwhelm, it's just like the first one works. Right. And so, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle to get caught up in the humor of all the mummy wine culture and then the marketing that's, you know, really being pressed down on women in particular. Um, and then that first one working. So this is an easy hole for people to fall into. And then it's got its hooks in you. Right. Now, then, yeah, you said ahead. you've lived it. So why don't you share a little bit about your story um, so that, oh, you know... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I haven't had a drink in like eight years now. Um, so when my son was a toddler, that's when my eyes kind of got peeled open, right? Like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like, this is, this is not, this is not acceptable. This is not going to work. Like I can't, cause I really quickly realized like, it's one thing when it's just you for yourself and it's like, you know, which is sad because you're, you know, you're hurting yourself. You really are. But as soon as you have someone else, a child that you're in charge of right and role modeling for and all those good things 
you pretty quickly realize that if I'm choosing to have a drink or two or more, I'm not choosing my child. Like they are completely being neglected, left out, disconnected from, and they feel that. So I quickly woke up to that um, and just kind of had like a heartbreaking moment where it was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. And, and that, like, that was it. That was and, it. And what was it like, uh, just to give us a bit of background, like, was it having a drink every day after work or? Oh, or I'd been in the garden all Saturday and it was like, ah, you know, Saturday afternoon. And then it would just kind of, you know, usually by the end of the evening, I had gone through a whole bottle, right? That was pretty much the norm. Right. So, you know, and actually, and then in the summertime, it kind of even becomes a bit more. It's like, cause you know, like I said, you're like out in the sun or the beach or the patio or gardening or whatever. It's like, oh, maybe now I'll even have like a gin and tonic cause or like a whatever, right? Like there's just always a reason or an excuse where one would just be like so good, right? Wow. But one would always lead to more for me. Right. Right. Um, and then for so, you, what was the like, was there like an event or something like what was the thing that made your eyes go, oh, my God, I can't do this anymore? Um, it was. Yeah, I mean, kind of had like a little mini heartbreaking awakening. Right. When my toddler walked into the room one morning and I just couldn't meet like I wasn't really even, you know, I'd had a few drinks the day before, but nothing spectacular. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm still going through all the motions here of everything. Right. So this is that whole gray area. Right. That so many parents, but specifically women are in and it affects women differently. Right. You can never compare yourself to a man. And, you know, so ladies watching and why would you? Um, you can't compare yourself to your, your husband, your partner, your whatever. Like you just have to take um the inner you know you've got to listen to that inner guide that in, inner compass for you and you know when maybe two drinks is too much for you you know like whatever you know what it is and so I just had this moment where my son came in when he was a toddler into the bedroom and it was morning right and that's when we feel it from the day before and I was just dull right foggy and 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 it was like I couldn't meet his energy I couldn't meet him where he was at. And like, I just like, it just broke my heart. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> like why, why did I even have a kid then? If, if I can't meet him right where he's at, when he wants me, needs me, whatever, like it's called neglect. So I just like, everything just shifted in that moment for me. And I was like, I can't do this. And because I had a parent who also used alcohol and other things. And, and so I knew what that felt like to not have that deep connection when you need it and want it right with your parent. Um, and I was like, I can't do this because I know what it feels like. Right. Um, it's yeah, it's emotional neglect. Right. So anytime you have a drink or more or, or whatever you're doing, whatever your thing is, you're not connected to your child. So you're emotionally neglecting them which is a form of abuse, right? Just, you know, <laughs> it's and unintentional, I, but it's abuse and it's trauma, right? You're, you're instilling trauma. Yeah. And I, now I'm sure that for, for many of us who like, we have a few drinks now and then there's this, uh, there's this desire within us to push back and say, I am not neglecting my child. Like I'm not, like, so it, it feels like a bit of a harsh label to put on it. Yeah. Is that, yep. <laughs> if you just need well, to come to terms with that and say, okay, yeah, then it's like that. Whole, this is the whole gray area of alcohol use disorder, right? So you're somewhere on the spectrum of alcohol use disorder. So if, yes, if it's just on the weekends and you're having a few drinks, you just want to arrange it so that either your child, if they need care, someone else is watching them someone else is in charge of them someone else is is going to be responsible for looking after them right um or you do it not around your child right because believe me children do not like being around people who are drinking it feels gross and i'm sure that you can remember that as a child just how unsettling it is being a kid around people who are drinking to whatever level, because you can't understand that. And you know that anyone who's using substance to whatever level, 
there's like I said, there's like this disconnect, right? And so the, the kids are left kind of feeling uncertain or ungrounded or kind of floating. And I mean, you got to look at your kid, right? How old are they? And is someone else in charge of them, right? So if you've got it under control and it's a once a week thing and you know what I mean? Like, you know, you just, everybody knows. You can't lie to yourself. You know, if you got an issue or not, if you're having problems or not. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> but the main thing is if they're under, if the kids are in a certain age, like you just have to like make sure someone else is in charge of them. Or if they are, you know, teen level, like you gotta be having serious conversations with them, right? And getting it really clear about how much you're using or not using and what your guidelines are around all of that because yeah it's a big deal it is a big deal and um you know not not even just teens like i was telling you a little earlier in my own personal story of i said i have i wouldn't say that i have completely quit drinking because i will have a drink now and then but i'm yep. very very selective about when i do it yep. um, i used to have a, you know this would have been a couple of years ago um, I always had wine in the house and it was pretty habitual for me to, after I finished the day of work, to top it off with a, a, a half glass of wine and then another half glass of wine. And of yeah. course, my son doesn't know, um, he yeah. would have been six or seven at the time. He doesn't know, you know, that it's a half glass. He just yeah. sees one drinking, right? Yeah. And the story in his mind became, oh, mom gets drunk every Tuesday. and. And when I heard those words come out of his mouth, and I was never drunk in his presence, like right. this is not something. And yet I realized that this habit that I had yeah. was giving him an image of me and right. an image of how adults um, yeah. live life yeah. that I was not okay with. Right. So and, it requires a conversation, right? So yeah. you have to talk, first of all, have a conversation. Like if you're totally moderating really well and you don't you know no issues with it no mental games that's always the you know you're not playing any games with yourself like it's not becoming this thing right um just having an open conversation with him right around what it is what it means how all the things like you know lots of explanation explaining right where you're at but that's really Oh, kids are a great little mirror to, to tell you what they're seeing. <laughs> they are amazing mirrors. And I, I did have to do like a, a check in with myself. I'm like, okay, is this, is this a problem? Not just for him, not because that's an image I don't want him to have, but like, am I, is this, has this become a crutch for me? Yeah. And, um, the reality was that I had to be honest with myself is that, yeah, I'm numbing out a little bit, not a lot, not. Yep. You know, it, it, it yeah. falls in that gray area of I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not plastered, I'm not an alcoholic, but am I there's, a, there's a negative impact here. What's or, what, so, or am I looking for a reward because I'm, I deserve it. Like you have to just like, what's the story that I'm attaching to this, right? So for a lot of people, it's like, I deserve this. It's a reward. I need you to do. It's like, yeah. oh. Okay, so you're searching star from job well done. Okay, it's um, how else could you reward yourself? Like, what's a, what's the true re reward for all the work that you've just put in in your day, or like taking care of your kids all day? Like, yeah, like we do need to give to ourselves something, absolutely. But alcohol is never truly a reward for your body and mind. It just isn't. Okay, so find another kind of reward if that's, or is it? the escape and the numbing and I just want to like check out of my life right like just you know and so the clearest way the easiest way to recognize if you are kind of questioning like um go 30 days without drinking or even two weeks like I dare you and you will quickly realize something about yourself real quick you will know in a you know no time what's what really you're thinking, how you're really feeling, how deep the hooks are really in you, just like try to stop. Yeah, conduct a little experiment. Conduct Absolutely. a little experiment on yourself. And journal, journal what's really coming up so you can reflect. Oh, right? what, what am I really searching for? Is it, you know, what am I really escaping? What am I wanting? What am I, or just like how, how hard is it? <laughs> I love, I love those questions. You know, like if you're not really a journaler, um, you can, you can just have one or two questions that you're yep. going to answer every day. Like, you yep. know, what am I, what do I feel like I need to escape right now? Like, I feel like having a drink. What is it that I'm trying to escape? Yep. Or is this, you know, is this a reward that I'm trying to give myself? Yep. Is there an alternative that I can find? 
or am I pleasing someone because my partner's always drinking and they want me to drink with them? Or like, why am I really doing this? Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Questioning, questioning what's going yeah. on. Yeah. So what are some of the um, more desirable, let's say, alternatives? You know, if say I find, oh yeah, I am using it as a crutch or yes, I am using it as a reward and it's not really, you know, over the long term going to be a reward for me in terms of my health. Right. What are some alternatives that, um, that maybe you found that your clients use or that you use um, that, that people could consider? Right. Well, it kind of depends what you're, what you're leaning into it for. Right. So if it is the whole reward thing, um, just start by drinking something else. that's really yummy, right? There's a million, like literally now there are a million other yummy, desirable things that you could be drinking that are refreshing and sweet and good or like whatever, right? Like there's literally a million, um, or, or like have the cake, like have the ice cream, like whatever, like treat yourself, you know what I mean? Or go buy a pair of shoes, like just something, right? If, if it's kind of that, right? And you just wanna give yourself a little bit of like, yeah, I deserve something cause I'm, you know what I mean? But oh, if, it, if, it's, if it's a mental thing, right? Stress and anxiety and overwhelm, or you just need to escape or, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, like again, there's there's so many more rejuvenating activities you could be doing, right? Like right now it's summer, like, I mean, come on, like just walking, stretching, yoga, have a bath, you know, go for a bike, like, you know, anything, call a friend and just natter or like, sometimes it's just a conversation to like, you wanna dump it, right? Maybe you need to have a, a dump, right? Or if you like to write, do that like or read or just like I mean I would like to think that everybody kind of has a couple of things that they know what they like to do right mm -hmm. or you know what honestly if you want to numb out like it's okay to numb out on your phone or tv or a movie like it's okay everybody needs to numb out we are in an overstimulated world and as long as it's not something like you know three hours later <laughs> <laughs> right? Like put, putting put a, a container, container around it. Yeah, if you want to like lay on the couch, cause I know for a lot of women, this is like, it's kind of, I just want to relax. Just want to relax, right? Go to your bedroom, go to the couch, whatever, put a timer on for 30 minutes and like numb out on your phone. There's nothing wrong with that. Just put a little parameter like time-wise around it. Right. So you don't get lost an hour later. And so boy, um, unless you have an hour, right? Just like some people at the end of the evening, they do like to just watch a movie and flake out like everyone needs to numb out we're overstimulated there's more demands than ever right and um and you know this can be part of the problem with so you just have to know do i need nature do i need movement or have i or am i already physically exhausted and i've been here and there and all over the place so actually i kind of want to cocoon and hibernate and that's where a screen watching a little tv or scrolling or like it's okay it's all okay like that's that's healthy numb out because once your time is up, you can come back to the world and be present and connect with your children or your partner or whomever, right? So you're not permanently spaced out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm what I'm picking up from all of this is, you know, constantly checking in with yourself and having an awareness of what's going on um, in inside of you, whether it's in your head or in your body. But like you you really need to be conscious of what choices you're making in terms of like how do i how do i relax myself how do i let off steam how do i um you know so what we're, yeah so what we're talking about is like sovereignty right so taking 100 percent ownership now that i'm an adult right i'm going to take 100 percent ownership over my well-being my mental health my physical well-being everything about me and I'm not gonna throw myself away into a drink or what someone else wants me to do, right? I'm gonna own it, right? So you gotta sit with that. <laughs> that ownership is so important because so often there, you know, you'll hear that, well, they they made me feel this way, or you know, someone else, that that idea that you're being forced into something, and you know, it's it's so tempting because then oh, it's not our fault, 
right? Mm. But, but taking ownership of it really is where the power is. Right. Because then you are the captain of your ship. Right. Right. right? And, and worthiness plays a big factor into this with, especially with women. Um, most women's self-worth is pretty low, right? So most women, you think? Oh yeah. I think we're riddled with, women are riddled with shame and body issues and poor mindset, you know? Um, yeah. And so our self-worth, we need to kind of raise the standard for ourselves right? Like I deserve better than this. Cause yeah, you do. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> something's making you uncomfortable. Something doesn't feel good. Well, own it and do something about changing it. Right. So raise the standard. You don't have to settle. Oh, settling. Why would you ever want right? to settle for anything? So that's yeah. low self-worth. If you're settling, it's a sign that you have low self-worth in some area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a, that's a really tough thing to admit. I, I think, um, you know, you might not even realize it. that's the thing. I think most women don't even realize it. I didn't even realize till my late thirties where my self-worth was really at, right. You know, can you, take a, do you receive compliments well, or do you deflect, you know, that's a, there's lots of ways to notice. Oh, there was a great, um, well, there, I think she did a whole chapter on it in um, the year of yes, Shonda Rhimes. I don't know if you've read that book. I have not. But she talked about, oh, I loved it. And I love listening to it. So get it on Audible. <laughs> it's yes, that's awesome. yeah. <laughs> but, but she talked about this, this exact thing where as women, we tend to like even the most accomplished women. Oh, that's no big deal. Oh, I, you know, I, that was really, that was teamwork. And, and they can't just say, thank you. Shut yeah. up and smile. The, that was the line. Say we thank see. you, then shut up. See, right. Yeah. This, yeah. The, the accolade or the appreciation or the gift or the thank you or the compliment, receive it, sit yeah. in it like bask in it. Yeah. Um, and I think another good little, uh, thing for women, it's like, how often are you saying sorry? Oh gosh. I've had, I've had women on the phone, like just people that I've connected with and we don't necessarily know each other yeah. very well yeah. and something will happen and they'll start, they'll start crying about something that's going on in their life. And she's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, you do not have to be sorry. You don't have to apologize for these emotions. Like, this so is that again is a signal of low self-worth. If mm -hmm. you're recognizing that you say sorry a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, there's, and there's other ways to acknowledge that yeah. maybe someone else has been put out. Like if you're late, thanks for being so understanding and patient. Yeah. Yeah. As so again, all, and all of these things play into, um, why a woman or someone, anyone would, would then want to use alcohol <laughs> because again, it's a way to kind of numb the insecurities or the pain or just escape the bullshit and stress or whatever, right? It's, it's just like, ah, oh, I don't want to deal with any of this. I'm just gonna have a drink. Yeah. And it's so and easy. You stunt, you stunt your growth. You, you're just stunting your growth, right? Like it's so true. Yeah. So your, you person, your personal growth. Yeah. 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 So let's say someone watching this says, oh my God, I, I, I think I do this. I think I gray drink. I think I'm, you know, um, you know, not the best, not the best version of myself for my kids or for myself. Yeah. What would be the first step that you would advise them in taking towards changing that? Right. Well, again, first thing you do, you have to remove it, right? So you have to take like a two week break or even better yet, go a whole month and just see, because all your stuff is going to come right up, mm -hmm. right? Either you'll only manage to go like two, three days. And then it's like, oh boy, I better ask for help here right? I better try it. Keep trying. Just keep trying. Um, that's, that's a, that's a really, like, if you can't get very far, like very many days, because until you remove it, you can't really deal with anything. Right. So step one is just like removing <laughs> the substance, removing the toxic substance or toxic, whatever. Um, so that then you can like, 
deal with what you need to actually deal with, right? Work through whatever issues or do whatever kind of growth or healing or just, you know, rearranging of circumstances. Um, but you have to get the alcohol out of the way first or whatever your substance is, right? Um, so, and if you can't go very, you know, you go a few days and it's like, oh my God, you're keep trying, like just keep trying to quit and see if you can like just build up like, okay, so you flubbed it all this weekend again, just start again. Like just keep trying, keep trying, keep and see if you can just build up that length of time and you'll start to get clarity. Like you will start to see the world differently the longer you go without it. If you go a whole 30 days, you're going to have a total different uh, sense of awareness and clarity. Like I promise. Yeah. It's poison, right? Like it is shutting down crap in your brain every single time you drink. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that after I had like, and it was probably about a month or so, um, I can't remember how long it was, but like I, I purged all the booze out of my house and I said, yep. okay, like, I'm just, I just need a break. Like I need to yep. un unhook from this. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and I just felt more clear. I felt like I no longer felt like I needed that half yep. whole half glass <laughs> at the end of the day. Like it, and it's so it's such a lightweight. <laughs> I know. Well, and it wasn't it wasn't that I I couldn't have drank more, <laughs> but I I was like, well, that's good. You were like, actually I moderating I, quite well. I, like I was it. moderating, yes, yes. But you know, there would be the night where you know, anyways. <laughs> but but after a while, I just found like. I had managed to go, oh, I just don't, I don't really need this. And I, I actually feel better. Like I get to the yes. end of the day and I don't think, oh, I'm tired and I need that glass of wine. I'm like, okay, so we're done dinner and let's do the dishes and da, 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 da. And, and yeah. I just kept rolling through the day. Exactly. And guess what happens? You feel better and we all actually want to feel good. So this is the whole thing, right? Like you get better sleeps, you're clearer, like your everything starts functioning better, your periods are easier, like for the women, like every your skin starts to glow, like everything gets better. Everything. <laughs> what did you say? My son came out of his room and then just like started watching his thing and I'm like, everything gets better. Be quiet. <laughs> What's that? Believe me, if it wasn't better on the other side, we'd all go back to it. Like you couldn't pay me to, to have a drink of anything. Like it's just not worth it. There's no benefit. There's just no benefit. No. And you realize that once you get to the other side of it, it's like, oh, wow, everything's better. Why would I? And even one. Yes, even one. Because people ask me that all the time. Wouldn't you just have one now? Because it's like, no, because I actually now I am deeply aware of what even one drink does to your system and all the um, increases in cancers, like even one glass of wine ups your risk of breast cancer by 15%. Really? Really? See, now I'll admit, I'll admit I will have the odd glass of wine, but it's always, and, and for me, it's there, there's parameters around it. So it's yes. a social setting. Like I'm visiting yes. with people that I enjoy hanging out with and, yes. and together, you know, it, it needs yes. to be somehow celebratory and like right. there's very strict parameters around, but I, I uh, you're hardcore, Mian. I don't I know. know well, I can completely go cool. I know more than most people know now. And once you know, you can never not know. Mm. And it's like, I just be like, I, it just, yeah, once you know. So I do recommend, there's a book I recommend for every woman, whether you, this is about drinking or not, or if you just want to enrich your wisdom of the, the feminine plight through the last few hundred years, right? Of feminism and just getting equality and all of that kind of thing. Um, there's a book called Quit Like a Woman. Oh. And it's quite something. It's like, oh yeah, it's just my, it will blow your mind just how much we've been manipulated. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to pick that up because that just yeah. sounds too intriguing. It's really, really good. And yeah. I'm, a, I'm afraid it may change my life. <laughs> There's, it's incredibly eye-opening yeah. for a woman. Yeah, it wow. really is. And it, I mean, yeah, it's historical, but it's like factual and it's her personal story in it as well. And, um, but yeah, like we're all just getting played by big alcohol in oh. the same way that the tobacco industry 
plagued us all back in the 70s and prior, right? Right. They yeah. knew. They knew. Well, they knew. Of course they knew. And this is why 8 million people a year die every year from smoking. Um, but it's almost like we're still coming out of that, right? Um, and it's the same way alcohol, um, they've been manipulating us with advertising and big alcohol, right? Like over 3 million people die every year from alcohol related stuff, right? 3 million. Wow. Um, is that worldwide? Is that yeah, Canada? Yeah. Okay. No, worldwide. Yep. It's that's, about that's 80 people. Yeah. It's, I think it's something like 88,000 in North America. Um, but 3 million globally. Yeah. And, and, but cigarettes still out kill everybody by 8 million. So a lot, right. But just to show like, not that long ago, like everyone was smoking, like people were smoking on, like, I remember as a kid, everyone's smoking on the planes, everyone's smoking everywhere in the restaurants, like, ugh, right. And now it's like, you look like a pariah if you're smoking a cigarette, right? It's so true. It's so true. So in about 10, 15 years from now, it's alcohol is going to be looked upon as the same way because the, the, the real truth behind what's in it and what, just how bad it is for you is now out there. Yes. Just as yeah. a last. And, and there's, I know that I watched the other day, a, uh, well, a few months ago by the other day, I mean, a few months ago, um, there was actually a thing on Netflix <laughs> about, about booze. And this guy did like this kind of investigative series about mm -hmm. um, alcohol and the impact that it has on your body yeah. and, and um, you know, how it impacts different people differently. And it, yes. it's actually really interesting. Yeah, a yeah. big, what we're all really, I think, craving, of course, is connection and ritual, mm -hmm. right? So for all the parents and moms and everybody out there, like, we just want more deeper connections, right? With people that we love and we want more ritual. And so this is where alcohol is like this ritual thing, right? When we get together or at the wedding or the whatever, it's like the ritual of it all. We've got all these images and stories of the rituals and we love rituals. We love coming together and sharing and all of that. Like, and we crave that we're human, right? Um, but we can replace the, that, that thing that we're using in the ritual, right? That whatever with something else. It can be tea. It can be a sparkling pear juice. It can be anything you want just create a new ritual of what you're going to be drinking while you're connecting and socializing and all of that good stuff right it just you know sub yeah, it i love it, can it. Just be grape juice or whatever like it doesn't have to have the alcohol in it to make anything better because it only ever makes everything worse right yeah yeah absolutely it's I, and i love that idea of replacing it with something else that that you still get the ritual, you still get the experience, but the yummy factor. We want yummy. We want tasty. We want oh, give me another one, yeah, because it's so good, right? Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if we talk, if this is like this is the point, right? And so what what the real you have to keep in mind is what this is doing to your children. Yeah, that like you know it's a heartbreaker. It's a heartbreaker because if you're ultimately choosing to drink, no matter how much you're choosing, you're not choosing to connect, to, to keep the connection with your child. Because the minute you start drinking, you are disconnected from the world. You're in your own little bubble of nummy bliss or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, therefore, no one else is able to really connect with you. And so for children, they are so sensitive to that. They feel that. And that's where the neglect is happening. Yeah. No yeah. matter what level you're drinking. Yeah. So. Yeah. It happens with booze and I see it happen with um, uh, phones as well. Like yeah. You'll see, you'll see people completely glued to their phones. Yeah. You know, they're, they're at the park with their kids, but they're glued to their phone the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, and, and, and I get it. Like it's so tempting and, and sometimes we do need to be on there, but like when you're there and the whole time, yeah. and I, I gotta say like the other day, um, and, and it was so hard for me not to go into judgment, but this woman's there on her phone and her like two or three year old was like toddling off into the parking lot. And I had to come up to her and I'm like, hey, so uh, you might wanna, you might wanna deal with that. It's just so engrossed. Stay connected. Escape. Yeah. Be yeah. with 
and stay connected to them, right? You have to keep the connection open. And I mean, the only thing, the only good thing about this is you can immediately disconnect from that and reconnect with your child, right? Because you're not, it's not a toxic substance, right? So yeah, yeah. Like in a second, you can be connected again. You just have to remember to reconnect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that, that there's always that opportunity to just put it down mm -hmm. and, and choose. Like you, you can, you can make a different choice at any moment. Yeah. And that's, that's beautiful with anything. Yep. You just choose, choose differently choose and differently. then move in that direction. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. I habit, choose a new anything, just choose differently and then keep choosing it. Mm -hmm. Keep choosing it. Keep trying. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Well, Mian, I am so grateful for the work that you're doing. I think it's amazing. I think it's, you know, this, this under the surface issue that's not being addressed in our society. And um, like I said, at the beginning, these jokes, uh, you know, about mommy needs a cocktail and, you know, that kind of thing. It's just, at the end of the day, it's not serving us. Right? right? We're not being the person that we really could be, you know, if we're, if we're numbing out, we're not focusing on, okay, what's my next step? What do, what do I want to create for myself and my family next? Yeah. Not that we have to always be go, go, go. No, but you know, how uh, particularly alcohol has this way of like hanging out in your system for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And, yeah, and just kind talking. of snapping you. Yeah, absolutely. And then of course, you know, post COVID here, um, alcohol, the rates of increase of consumption are like, oh my God, it's scary. Like 400% or something insane in certain places. Like, oh boy. So stress, right? So stress, 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 but there are so many other ways to manage and actually deal with stress because alcohol doesn't deal with your stress. Yeah. But no, it take it a it's taking a pass and it doesn't go away. It actually starts to accumulate. Right. 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 Awesome. So if people want to connect with you, um how how can they find you and um potentially work with you or ask you questions um, or whatever? Um, um well instagram is my main uh hangout so it's just my name which i realize is a little tricky for people so i don't know if you can drop that oh, in the comments or links or whatever but it's just my name um but if you want to go straight to the website that i have it's womenwillrise.ca i love that name so much <laughs> How did you snag that one? Because it's hard to find great. Well, I got the dot ca. Dot com was like two thousand dollars. It's oh. true. Womenwillrise.com was too, but so I just got dot ca because I'm in Canada. So yeah, it's all good. It totally makes sense. All good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, wonderful. I will and I will share in the the notes um, your Instagram handle and your website. And uh, yeah. I'm Thanks. so nice to talk to you. So nice to talk to you. And I'm so grateful to, to um, be in your life, have you in my oh. life. And oh. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I know. Virtual hug. <laughs> we'll, we'll meet up at the park. Yes, we will. Okay. <laughs>